So for you in the chat, I'm curious, like, what are some somatic symptoms or somatic things that you experience when you feel nervous, anxious, worried? You know, some people may say increased heart rate. You feel your heart beating a little bit. Boom, 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 boom. Maybe you have. Beating. <laughs> breathing. <laughs> Is that the word that I'm looking for? Increased breathing? I feel like there's got to be a smarter word for it. And, and I'm sure Bowen knows it. Like the increase. The <sighs> so that might happen. You might shake. You might sweat. Okay, what are some other symptoms that you might might feel? Hmm, I think these are the most common ones. The most common ones definitely is this increased heart rate where you feel like your heart's being on your chest or you are breathing faster at a faster rate. So, <sighs> yep. Okay, that's too smart. That's that's too smart. <laughs> Shortness of breath. <laughs> Taka Pena? Pena? Can't think. Yes, that goes under cognitive. Yes, very good. So, okay, let's go on. Let's go on. So, you know, some people do this. And the sweat, you know, sometimes you'll experience this in your body, your head, under your arms, your hands. Dry mouth. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, sweat. Sweaty, sweaty palms, sweaty body in general. Yes. Okay, so the cognitive ones, if you are, you know, some, some people think the, ooh, the stomach. Especially with the Asians, absolutely. Can't see straight. Ooh, vision blurry. Yeah, that's a good one. Absolutely. Okay, these are that's good. Very good. Very good, Bone. A plus. Okay. So cognitive stuff. You got the can't think. I like that. Or Overthink. Yep, we got the worries. We got the overthink. We got the... Have you seen this one? I, I had a very interesting case the other day. Not the other day, but like working with. And I could tell that he was worried all the time. When... Or I could tell that he was worried before his matches or his games. Because he wouldn't... He wouldn't sit still. It was the most interesting thing. He would be out of his chair. He'd be talking to uh, player managers, the officials, anyone he could talk to. And like you could just tell that there was this nervous aura about him. But he was trying to either mask it. He was either overcompensating for it by just like talking to people and like having this kind of chaotic energy. And it was really interesting how he like, you know. Yeah, inability to sit still happens all the time with players. It's really interesting. But this wasn't like pacing or anything. This wasn't like nervous pacing or he didn't look like an animal at the zoo where there was going back and forth, back and forth. Bro, this guy was just like... And just like talking. It was, it was interesting, not crazy. It was interesting. Anxiety to be uh, overreactive motor slash of cognitive function or shutting down. Absolutely. That's... Absolutely it. That's absolutely it. 100%, Bowen. 100%. Okay, can't think. Overthink. <laughs> uh, what ifs come? I think another one that's really interesting too is... Um, the evaluations. The evaluations of the situation. The evaluations of... You know, the meaning of the game, the meaning of what's going to happen, the thinking about uh, what other people might say to me, thinking about what other people might think of me. I think the evaluations come, you know, the values of what's happening. Uh, it, that's a version of overactive. Do I get a gold star? Bro, Bo, you not only get one, you get three gold stars and an A plus right now. 
Aw, cute uber noob. He says hi to you, Shining. Look at you, making friends. Way to go, way to go. Okay. Cognitive to black and white thinking. Ooh. Bowen, you are crushing. I like that. All or nothing. All or nothing. Black and white, all or nothing. These are very dangerous uh, ways of thinking. You know what's really interesting? Thinking of black and white thinking and, and stuff like that. You know, what I found, found to be really interesting in general has been like the people who I've experienced and worked with who have higher order level of cognitive functioning or higher order level of thinking, the common theme that I've seen is that this goes away. Not goes away per se, but there's less of this. And when he, black and white thinking or all or nothing thinking is basically it must be this way. It can never be. The, it, it must be this way always or it can never be this way ever. Right. Misperception or inability to assert, uh, assert to ascertain risk. Absolutely. Bro, your words that you use, Bowen, are very nice. I love your words. Ascertain. Very good. I should honestly... In these streams, you know, I, I have a, uh, I have a, uh, what's your face? I have, a. why isn't this thing, like, transforming the way I want it? There you go. I have a Excel spreadsheet or, or sheets, a Google Sheets of all the words that are, like, really nice and cool from the articles that I read, but I feel like I should just have a, a sh an Excel sheet of Bowen's awesome words or awesome words from my chat so you can make me smarter. <laughs> but again, going back to it, like as, as I work with, you know, not smarter players, but more, more experienced players, uh, more knowledgeable players, uh, more cerebral players, this goes away more. Because as you kind of get more experience or you learn more, you see more, you understand that it's never and always. It's never a never. There's always a depends. In this situation, it could be possibly if these things happen. And when I notice people saying it has to be must, that makes me listen more to be like, oh, how come? Like, what makes you think that? Like, where's your data that it's always like this? You know, I, I'm thinking back to all, also SATs. Like, that was one of the things where, you know, you're reading the passages and they're like, oh, which one is it that's incorrect? And it's like, oh, the one that always says always or never. But like, those are always incorrect because nothing is always or never. You know what I mean? And so if you're really good at your game or if you have more experience, you're in standard and can see it in three dimensions, you're able to kind of play and see different opportunities or different scenarios and the black and whiteness goes away. Also, fun, interesting thought to go along with black and white thinking or all or nothing thinking. Think of children's stories. Like, think of every fairy tale, every, like, um, children's, like, narrative or whatever think disney uh maybe even pixar maybe like older pixar but like classic disney fairy tales folk tales think about it there's always a good guy and the good guy is always good right they, they you don't see them do bad things they're like you know the typically the the white shiny knight like that archetype and then think of like the bad guy, the evil witch, the uh, bad wizard or whatever. They're all bad. Jafar, right? Uh, I love Disney, like like classic Disney. Like just uh, think of Jafar, think of Scar, think of the wicked witch. Like think of all those, like this evil stepmother. Like they're all terrible, ugly people inside, right? And so when you think of like children's stories and how it they, they flow... They're very simple on how you read them and how you can understand them. It's very clear. This is good and this is bad, you know? And so if you think about it, that's this. Children think, younger people think, in black and white, all or nothing thinking. Another one, if you were brought up in the US, <laughs> was that cops help you. You know, like they teach you that cops are helpful and that if you're in trouble, it goes call 911 and nothing bad is going to happen. And then you get older and realize that that's not always true. You know, like we like to think that all cops are good, but sometimes that's not always the case. And I'm sure people have, you know, had 
both experience of someone really helping as a cop and on the other hand, not so much. And so if you think about, you know, that in general too, as a child or kids books or whatever, it's black and white thinking. But as you get older and evolved, you have higher order level of thinking where different situations and scenarios don't always or never work out in a way that you may think. What's interesting is that more evolved, quote unquote, or players that are able to have abstract thought or are more articulate, the players will say, it depends. Amazing. Amazing. It depends. Yes, that, that has been my experience too. Or in, or they say in this situation and they, they, they make it. So it's a very specific in this situation, this thing was good because X, Y, or Z. They don't say always this was good. They say it depends in this situation, in this one thing, or be more nuanced in one-on-one conversation. Absolutely. But in team discussions, especially he discussions, they tend to be more black and white. Of course, because I want to be right and you're wrong. And this always works, you dumb dummy. <laughs> I'm always right. You're always wrong. <laughs> you're never right. Black and white. <laughs> Absolutely. So the thing with anxiety too, that I, that makes another metaphor or something that relates to this cognitive or mental or the uh, can't think, the what ifs, the all or nothing, the overthinking, or even the, I mean, I think the the can't think, right? Uh, the can't think or the think too much. We can think of both of these things have speed. The can't, the can't think is slow and the overthink is fast. Okay, now we're talking about speed of thoughts and how it may affect you. And when I think about anxiety, typically in my experience, you either go into flight or fight mode with the Fs, right? You, you freeze, you fight, or you fight, or you flight, right? Like these three or the other F that we don't talk about. That's not relevant here. Uh, anxiety goes poor memory. Yes, I also that definitely also works too. So what happens if your brain goes into flight or fight, now you've engaged the speeds of the rate of what you think. And so if you freeze, this is the can't thinking, this is the slow thoughts, maybe indecision. That's what we're thinking about here. If we're thinking about fighting or flighting, now we're thinking about maybe fast because you got to run fast, you got to fight fast or whatever. And so now if it's going too fast, it's hard to think. If you want to think of this as like, Driving a car, for example, you know, if you're driving 25 in a residential, like you can go pretty slow. And the reason for that is because you want to have a wide view of vision in case balls come out, children are running, other cars are here, whatever. Like the slower you go, the wider your vision can be. Thus, you can see more things and you can account for more things. But once you start going faster, Right, it's 40, say you're on a stretch, it's 45, you're going 50, going 60, 65, 70, California 80, 90, maybe even 100. What happens when you start going faster is your field of vision also shrinks. Now, instead of like when you're going 32, uh, 25 or 35, okay, maybe you can look around, you can uh, see more things because you have more time to react also because you're moving slower. But... As soon as you start increasing speed, your field of vision must also be more narrow because you must concentrate on what's in front of you because if you do not, you might crash, you might uh, be able, unable to swerve out of the way, and the field of vision narrows. The same thing happens to your mind. You know, if you're chill and you're relaxed, whatever, you're driving at like, we could be driving at like 35. 25 where you you have a lot of options you're, you're running through a lot of scenarios in your head and you know you can pick one and be chill or if something happens you can quickly put that into your brain and you know plot a course to turn out of the way or swerve out of the way but once the anxiety comes in once the worry starts kicking in you maybe go into the flight or you know fighting mode and now your speed of your thoughts are going faster and faster and faster. Your, um, how do I say this? The wideness of your thoughts, the creativity, the adaptability, the all those things that help you be more flexible in how you ap apply your strategies, your thoughts, now becomes more narrow and narrow and narrow and narrow. And now you get into this black and white thinking 
just because you have to because everything is going so fast. So the best way to slow down here is maybe taking a breath, taking a step back or thinking, okay, I am doing that worrying thing again. What is, what's another option? What's another option or how, or what can I do to slow down my thoughts or slow down my body or whatever? Because if I don't, you're going to crash because you're not really thinking about other things and you're moving way too fast. So think about the speed of the thoughts and how it might affect you too. Okay, maybe that goes down here. All right, I guess with that speed thing and the anxiety, and of course, like when we talk anxiety, you know, and I talk in flight or fight, the, the thing I want you to think ex uh, immediately or start connecting anxiety, flight or fight, speed, mental stuff, like I want you to think amygdalas. That is what I want you to think about. Your poor little amygdalas uh, are taking over your brain. They're flooding your body with, you know, adrenaline or whatever because it wants to. It wants to keep summer safe, right? If you're a Ricky Morty fan, keep summer safe. It wants to keep you alive. Its the amygdalas are consistently and constantly searching your environment for danger, for things that might kill you, for things that uh, might harm you. But here's the thing about your brain. It's very smart, but at the same time, very, very dumb because it cannot or has a very difficult time discerning, okay, is this something that's going to actually kill me? Like, for real, game over, unalive, dead? Or is it going to feel like it's going, like I'm going to die, like it's going to hurt real bad? Because interestingly, pain in your brain is interpreted the same, may it be emotional pain or somatic physical pain. Pain be pain. And so your brain is searching for danger. And funny enough, it may point out, oh my gosh, you playing ranked, that may be dangerous because people are going to say things. Your ego might like, like get hurt or all these other things that could happen to you. Uh, you might lose resources, your LP, your ranked points or whatever. And that's scary. So we're going to make sure that you are okay and feeling safe. And now you're freaking out in your chair. When there's not an actual you know threat i think it's also really interesting side note that human beings are the one of the only species or known species that they can be in a completely safe environment nothing's gonna harm them physically you know everything is chilling they have enough resources emotionally cognitively physically but they could be sitting down in the room completely safe but be in full-blown panic mode because of what we're thinking and what we're projecting or what we're, you know, thinking about that can full blown us into a panic attack or whatever. But literally we're safe. It's so odd. But then again, it makes me think of, damn, isn't your brain so powerful? And if you can master it, you know, understand it, the better will you'll be in avoiding these types of things or dealing with these things head on. Pretty sweet. All right. So emotional with anxiety, you got fear. You got nervousness. You know, interestingly too, anxiety can make you angry. <laughs> like anxiety is not just that like person in the corner, like rocking and freaking out or with the paper bag breathing. You also got the rager. Like, they're worried about how things are, or will be, or what it will mean, and anger will come out because they're either frustrated, or, you know, it's a stronger emotion, and so it comes out easier, you know? So, just because someone is angry doesn't mean that they're not worried. Yes, absolutely. Sad. That's definitely another one. You know, someone might be cheerful, someone might be, like, freaking out, panicking, and they might be sad about what could be, would be happening, and, you know, it could absolutely crying. That's all part of it. So just because someone might be worried or nervous about something doesn't mean it's always going to be like the absence of emotions. 
I, see, the hard part is like I want to use positive and negative because I'm thinking about like schizophrenia and like schizophrenia, you have like positive symptoms, which are like you hear the voices, you know, you see the things, you believe the stuff. Like those are positive symptoms because you're adding things into the experience, right? Versus like negative symptoms of like schizophrenia would be like anhedonia, like you don't care, you don't, you're not, you're, you're withdrawn, you don't speak as much, right? And these are negative symptoms because they take things away from you. And so when I'm thinking about like, yeah, they're like positive things. And I'm thinking about they're adding stuff into it, right? Adding anger, angry, loud, uh, ragey things. And I'm thinking like negative as in like, they shut down, they become smaller, they, uh, you know, do all the things that like make them withdraw 